Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB certification examination. Uh, we are talking about the foundation level exam and for we are here in the chapter 3 as of now. We, in continuation to the previous tutorial, we'll be still continuing with the 3.2 review process. So in the previous tutorial, we have already discussed a lot about the fundamental test process and understanding the six main phases of the review process uh, that's your formal review process following that we also spoke about uh, you know just a quick look on to the four types of review that's informal review walkthrough technical review inspection and so on so uh, now in this part two of this tutorial we'll be moving into the details of that where we'll be understanding how these four types of reviews are different from each other. So team, let's get started with it by understanding that each type of these review has their own recognition or their own value to be added as a part of the test process. So considering uh, informal review is a lightweight process where it does not involve more people, does not require much of your time, uh, minimal documentation or maybe no documentation at all, Whereas when you talk about walkthrough, involves a little more time compared to informal review and moving towards a being more formal compared to informal. And parallelly looking into technical review is more on the technical side, taking decisions, uh, making alternatives and so on. Whereas in inspection, it's the exactly the same thing which we follow as a part of formal review process. So let's get into the each one of them and understand how they are uniquely identified and what's their specificness. So informal review is basically consisting of some of these specific activities which are conducted standalone in informal review and considered as the most lightweight process. And informal reviews are generally conducted where we don't need more people or there is just a one-to-one -one discussion about a particular content. Then we go ahead with informal because we don't want to utilize uh, much of your time in the process, including more people having a full-fledged formal process or something. So that's where informal review comes into picture. So you can quickly have a look on the points here. That's, it says no formal process may take the form of peer programming. Now, when you say peer programming, it basically involves two people discussing on the code or designs, or maybe the technical lead will be reviewing the design. So if you talk about testing, Generally, uh, a tester uh, may be writing certain test cases and the test the lead would be reviewing their test cases it is also called as informal review. And when you prepare certain test script and somebody reviews your script before executing them, then we call it as, again, informal review. So that generally takes place on the day-to-day -day basis. For that, we don't need a full-fledged formal process. Very in usefulness, depending on the reviewers, of course. So, so the reviewer will decide whether this result was useful or maybe just some few corrections to be taken care and the reviewer can tell the same directly or verbally to the person who has written the script or code. So it does not really involve much of the people and time. But yeah, we do have some main purposes for the each review which makes you more understandable about each type of them. Is uh, One of them for informal review is inexpensive way to get uh, some benefit. Now team, this is, this is ISTQB standards where they give you these unique terms to remember. And sometimes they can ask you the question on this like, which one of these uh, activities in the given options do you expect to happen as a part of informal review? Then you need to remember that no formal process is one of the unique point about the uniformal uh, informal review. So each section, each type of review, the very first point and the last point will be the unique about each one of them. So in case you get match a following, then obviously the first and the last point of each type of review would be used to give it to you in the question. So do remember that. That's one of the tips for you for the writing examination. Looking on to the walkthrough, <clears throat> Meeting led by author, so obviously, you know, this is something which is different from the formal review. When you talk about formal review process, the moderator is the one who leads the review, whereas in walkthrough, the one who has written the document, being the author of the document, is itself leading the review. Whereas, may take the form of uh, scenarios, try runs, peer group participation, so obviously, these are the way how a walkthrough can be executed and uh, can be performed within the teams, within the peer or people from the same group 
can perform the same. So it is limited to one of the particular stake, uh, stakeholders groups. Say, for example, it might be limited to development team, it might be limited to design team, or it might be within testing team or some other stakeholders team. Here, we do not conduct any kind of preparation time, so we do not have any preparation phase, including the preparation review report, so we don't have any kind of review meeting, which is taking place as a part of it. So it's just that, you know, few people sit together to discuss on it, and we just verbally understand that, okay, what are the things and where we can go about it or what we can further continue with. So if it is understandable and how we are processing. So when you talk about the tasks, understanding or understanding a particular requirement before processing it into uh, design or something, then we can do it. Scribe is optional, of course. When your review report is not written, then scribe role becomes optional. So it's not mandatory, subjected. The uh, review report becomes mandatory or you take it as an option, the scribe will be also an option for you. May vary in practice from quite informal to formal. Uh, this point basically uh, reflects on the point where it is written as optional. So optional basically means either it can be yes or no. If you opt that option and keep it, then it is going to be more formal compared to informal. But if you opt as no, that okay fine we are not doing any kind of preparation we are not conducting any kind of report report then obviously it will be quite informal so it may vary from practice okay from informal to formal the main purpose of this walkthrough is learning gaining understanding and finding defects the next one is being the third type of review is technical review so Compared to informal and walkthrough, the technical review is more on the technical side where we talk about uh, you know, working with standards, working with uh, making decisions, finding alternatives or something. So it's more on the technical side and requires more technical exports compared to the uh, ordinary reviewers where anybody just can be part of it. Now here we will be involving peers and technical reviews, but it also involves a documented defined defect detection process where we say documented then it is you know obviously uh, making use of reports which are being prepared there are you know preparations are being done by the reviewers so you know putting it all together we say it as documented and we, we we do take care of some of the activities of the formal but if you see here we have optional management participation so when we say optional management participation then the manager is not involved here so I don't really have to wait for the manager's approval or something or, you know, maybe involving manager's protocol and say that, okay, fine, we want a schedule internally within the team. I can conduct it. But yes, it may involve the management where you can say that it is optional if it can be yes or it can be no. So we can also call it as a peer review because it involves peers and technical experts. So peer are basically your you know, domain experts or people from a particular group who are experts can be used as a part of it. Ideally led by your trained moderators, so if you can see slightly the things are being improved towards the formal uh, review, pre-meeting preparation, optional use of checklist, and obviously the report which is created. And we understood all this point the moment we said it is documented, defined de defect detection process. May vary in practice from quite informal to formal, Obviously, if this optional, that is involvement of management and many other activities as a part of formal, can be included into this. The main purpose, discussing, making decisions, evaluating alternatives, finding defects, solving technical problems, and checking conformation to specification, plans, regulation, and standards. So you can uh, already be, you know, you would have started making difference between the informal walkthrough and technical reviews uh, where it makes a lot of difference and uh, some are lightweight, some are heavyweight. And beyond that, there are a few of the things which are not practiced as a part of informal, but with practice as a part of technical. So they have their own uniqueness, which is what you need to remember about. The next one and the last one is inspection. And if you remember your formal review process in the previous tutorial, uh, it is exactly the same thing. It's just that uh, ISTQB wants to make you understand that how a formal review must be conducted and following that they bring you to inspection to just make you understand that inspection is the most formal review process. So here if you see all the points would be following as per the formal review process and they'll be contributing to the same.
So led by trained moderator, usually conducted as peer examinations. We have defined roles here, including the matrix gathering. Formal process based on rules and checklist, a specified entry and exit criteria, pre-meeting preparation, inspection report, including the list of findings, and a formal follow-up process. The only purpose is to conduct inspection to find defects. So if you see, this is the most formal thing, and obviously following all the principles of formal test, a formal review process, and that's where inspection is called as the most formal. Now, when it comes to the question types on this, they may ask you that which is uh, what type of review are you supposed to conduct when dealing with safety critical systems? Then obviously it will be inspection because for safety critical systems you do not take a chance by conducting any kind of informal thing. So you go with more formal compared to any other type of review. So. Finally, this is the topic which we are talking about as over. That's the review types, the formal review process, uh, the four types of reviews. And when we come to finally is the last topic on last segment of this topic, that is review process, is success factor for reviews. Uh, speaking about success factors for review is basically all about how a moderator or a manager must take care of uh, such factors or certain factors which involves the success rate of a review. Just conducting the review is not enough. We need to also understand that how a review can be made successful within the process. Because when you are allocating time, you are inviting resources, you are allocating uh, the cost, the budget to be you know executed as part of review, then at the end you must also uh, calculate or evaluate that if it, if it was successful one or the beneficial to the process or not and for that we need to you know consider certain factors to be a part of it and it must be a responsibility to the manager or moderator to be taken care of one or the other way to implement and measure the you know effectiveness of the reviews being conducted so if you see the points here like each review has a clear predefined objective no matter if you are conducting informal or formal you must have an objective defined which just makes it sure that, okay, fine, we were conducting a review and finally we have met it or not. So if you don't have an objective before we kick off, then obviously at the end it will be difficult to measure was it really successful or not. Having the right people for the review objective is equally important. You just can't invite the developers to do a review on the test script or something. But to some extent, it is also equally required that a developer may get involved with reviewing the scripts and the test cases because it's equally important for them to understand what test cases are you executing. So not always, but subject to your objective is that. Testers are valued reviewers to the process, obviously because testers are the one who will be validating the application. So if they are invited based on the principles of early testing, earlier in the SDLC model, then it will be quite helpful to them. And also they'll be... Uh, you know, contributing from a validation perspective uh, from the input of the end user psychology. Defect founds are welcomed and expressed positively. Team, yes, we are talking about the psychology of testing. At this point of time, we'll be having uh, certain reviews where people from different teams will be invited to a uh, review meeting. Then it, it sometimes becomes a challenge to say, you know, somebody is trying to prompt a message or say a defect about the author's content, then author must not feel uh, awkward about it. It's just that the author is supposed to welcome the defects being raised by the reviewers because they are valued people to contribute to make your document more effective, complete, and optimum. So must be welcoming the defects being raised by the reviewers, and that's the reason review is being conducted. Review outcome must not be used to evaluate individuals. Yes, when you talk about uh, review outcomes uh, are not supposed to be used as a part of evaluating individuals, is you don't have to make any kind of decisions or an outcomes or kind of you know you know you alternatives about the individual when they either contribute to review or they are not able to find many defects. So. Sometimes it does happen that when a reviewer is unable to find defects and there are many other reviewers who have found it, uh, generally management starts tolerating such person as that they are not good enough to contribute to the process. So it's not about the individual. Sometimes it's come back to the author as well, that in case a more number of defects are being identified, we do not evaluate the author 
based on the count of defect. It is just the documentation and keep it limited to the documentation that we are trying to improvise the documentation, not the author. Appropriate selection of the review type. You need to decide being a manager that what type of review must be conducted for different type of documentation within the process, which is going to save your money and have a cost effective test estimation or plan. Training must be given to the individuals about the review process that they must understand the difference between the types of review, which would help them to make it more effective and implement it in the right way. Management must support a good review process, which simply means that a management should allocate enough time to conduct reviews within the process and not just say that, okay, we are running Titan schedule, so let's not waste our time to conduct reviews and use whatever documentation we have with us. So a management must support conducting the reviews and a good reviews by you know, imparting all the understanding, learnings, and experience towards their team and the process. There's always an emphasis on learning when you learn it within the process that obviously uh, you can improvise your documentations as a part of conducting the reviews. As you gather information, you gather matrices, you collect the review reports by understanding what typical defects are being introduced at the beginning of the uh, uh, preparation of the content at a very early phase, then it basically helps you to improvise yourself when it comes to next time when you write any kind of documentation. So it does apply not only limited to requirement or design, it does apply to writing the code, uh, creating the flow charts, control flow diagrams, or maybe test cases or test scripts. It just makes someone uh, more improvised and optimized about making more perfect things when it comes to you know, preparation of such documentation based on the reviews. So. Concluding it all together, obviously reviews are the ways by which you can uh, find defects at an early stage, minimizing your efforts in the upcoming stages during the SDLT model, and also helps you to identify a lot of things which are not so easy or simple to find during dynamic testing. And there are different types of review where you can you know, either conduct a soft for one that is lightweight by minimizing your cost and effort and at some points, we need to stick to the formal review process, and obviously improvising can be taken care here. And that helps you to even improve your test process. So putting it all together, this is what is review process, and we have got the four types of reviews and understanding of the success factors. So we have one more topic to go from this chapter. That is static analysis with help of tool, which will be coming up in the next tutorial. After that, we'll be looking on to the sample questions of this chapter, which would basically make you understand what, what, what kind of questions can be asked to you from this particular chapter again. So till then, stay tuned. Uh, keep learning the videos. Uh, and thanks for watching the video. And in case you have any queries, any questions still to be clarified, please feel free to comment it on the comment box below. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible. Because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, till then, enjoy learning. Happy learning. Take care.